city of Advent. What a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and I'm glad to see all of you. Hope you've had a good uh, Thanksgiving holiday. And, and while I got you, how's your complaining going? Now, I know some of you think there's a, I'm just nuts, but there is a method to my madness. And, uh, you know, many weeks ago when we started the Grace series, I started off by telling you grace is what we need, not what we deserve. And so uh, a lot of you have not had very good luck on your complaining fast. You've shared that with me, and I'm not going to name any names. Yes. You quit complaining. Quit complaining and gone to gossiping. Okay. Oh, my. Well, again, I'm going to extend the grace of God to all of you and tell you today, we start again. All right? So uh, we'll try it again. But I believe in you. Till the 31st of this year, no complaining. Anyway, it's good to be here today, and I'm so glad all of you are here. If you're a guest with us, we're thrilled you're here and want you just to sit back and relax and enjoy our worship time. The, our ushers are coming, and they're going to pass out attendance pads. We'd like for you to fill out the information there. It just helps us understand who's at church and who's not, and we appreciate the information that you provide. While you're doing that, also, there are some announcements in your bulletin that I'd like to lift up. I won't go through all of them today. But at first, I want to thank all of the many people who helped decorate our beautiful worship center. And uh, thank you. And I think you, all of you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Throughout the entire block, if you will, uh, it's beautiful. And uh, certainly celebrates this season of Advent and Christmas and give thanks for that. Don't forget, uh, this afternoon, uh, those of you that are on the Stephen Ministry team, you all have a meeting this afternoon at 5 o'clock. It's not in the bulletin, so I wanted to be sure I lifted that up to you. Also, uh, I want to I remind you that Miraculum is coming this coming Saturday at 7 o'clock. And then again on Sunday, next Sunday, at 6. We need you to get your tickets. Uh, there are, they are free. But because of limited seating uh, and the fire marshal, we don't want him on us, so we need you to... Uh, get tickets for you, for yourself and your family, and we look forward to that. We want to thank everybody for, for, for uh, their planning and getting ready for it. There are other announcements there. Uh, Triple L's got a couple things going on. Uh, don't forget the, the toy sale. Look at the announcement in the bulletin about the toy sale. Poinsettias, uh, are being, orders for those are being taken now, so certainly respond to that. Uh, Ashley's got an announcement about uh, uh, the... Um, Heavenly dinner. Want to come and do that? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Um, it's that time of year again for our heavenly dinners. The Hope Circle does frozen meals for you all to buy and then to cook at home. And this year we're doing it around Christmas time and we're going to be doing breakfast casseroles and French toast casseroles. So we're going to give you a choice this year of what you guys would like. We thought it might be good for Christmas morning or New Year's morning or just on Christmas break. And all of the money goes here in the community to different groups that count on our support. So at Christmas time it's really important that we try to give to all the groups um, here in the community. So the minis are going to be $12 and the larges are going to be $20. And you can place these orders through December 12th and then you can pick them up on December 22nd and they're going to be frozen and ready for you guys to take home. So I will be in Gallery Hall um, after the service if you guys would like to place your order and you can do that for the next two weeks. Thank you all. Thank you, Ashley. Appreciate that. Tanya, you want to announce about uh, the... Uh, uh, It just, <laughs> sorry about that. I know all about it, but I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, today we began our new Advent Sunday School series uh, called Advent Conspiracy, and you are welcome to join us next Sunday. We're starting about 10 o'clock in Asbury Hall, meeting four weeks. Uh, Dr. Phil taught today. I teach next week. David Goins teach, teaches the week after. But what I wanted to highlight is we're going to have a, a, a table of uh, ideas for alternative Christmas gifts. Some, uh, some of them are hopefully going to be from close by. I've asked some of our local uh, 
places, the women's shelter and the men's shelter, to bring something. But uh, I haven't gotten anything from them yet. But there are lots of other ideas. Uh, the Morrisseys that were here, they're, that are um, in Thailand as missionaries, there are some ideas of what you could do for them. You could sponsor a child in school. You could help start a new church. Uh, the Littletons brought, uh, brought ideas of you can give a Span send a Spanish Bible to Honduras for $4. So if you have an idea of, of wanting to give in honor of someone, another really good opportunity is this Tuesday. The Advance is the United Methodist Mission Outreach uh, Program. And on Tuesday, any donations made online will be matched dollar to dollar. So if you would like to make a donation in honor of someone for Christmas, these books are available. I'll bring, I'll bring, I'm doing Little Church, so I will get them and bring them and put them out here in Gallery Hall as well because I have 50 copies of them. But you can look by project or you can look by country. Um, it's just a neat way to give in honor of someone that probably has too many things sitting around like I do. So uh, feel free to look at that display upstairs today and every week during Advent. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate that. Now, friends, let's... What? Now, now friends, let's stand. Let's greet one
Now let us await the lighting of our Advent darkness. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our hope. May the light sent death from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, O come, O come, Emmanuel. affirm our faith together through the Apostles' Greek. I believe in the God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
I'd like to invite our children to come forward now. Good morning. Good morning. Should, or should I say, Happy New Year? <laughs> it's close to it. Actually, today is the first day of the year. Did you know that? Actually, today is the first day of the Christian year. Why? Well, because today is the first Sunday of Advent. Did you see the candle? that was lit, that Houston lit, lit a little while ago, it signifies that we're beginning a time of waiting. Do you like to wait? No. Ooh, I heard a lot of sighs there. No. I don't like to wait either. And yet, you know, one of the things that we are doing in Advent is we wait. And what are we waiting for? Do you know? Right, we're waiting for Christmas. Very good. And we're waiting for Jesus' birth. That's right. And we'll celebrate that a little bit later. But we've got to take a few what? days to get there. Not yet. Well, he is, but we're going to celebrate. It's like a birthday, you know? You're born and you're going to have a birthday. Well, Jesus' birthday's coming. Well, no, but it's coming again. You, they come around every year, believe me. <laughs> anyway, we, we're looking forward to that. And, and I want you to be excited. Now, i got to tell you, the truth is, uh, when we do Advent, uh, did you notice the song the choir sang a minute ago? It was real quiet. Did you hear that? And the bells, did you hear them chiming? And it wasn't just, you know, big lights and glitter and all that kind of thing, but it was just a time of quietness, a time of reflection. And when Jesus was born, He was born in a time, a time of great turmoil and yet and he, and he came and he came in a quiet way to make a difference in the world and sometimes that's the way we make the greatest differences is by being quiet and by listening and by loving one another we'll learn you're going to learn more about that um, Ms. Tanya's doing little church today and you're going to learn some more things about Advent and you're going to enjoy that let's close with a prayer can we do that dear God we thank you for this time together and we thank you for our children and we ask you to bless them and our, their families and all of us as we surround them and nurture them. Oh God, in this season of Advent, we seek your face. And so come to us, O oh Lord. Come, O oh Emmanuel. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. You can go to Little Church. All right. The rest of the congregation will ask you guys to stand and let's sing together at number 206. I want to walk as a child of the light.
be seated. We gather in this place to bring our joys and celebrations and also our concerns and our needs. It's appropriate that we go to the Lord in prayer. I do have one request that's come before us today, and that is to lift up a former pastor, David Hilton. And David is in grave condition, and we want to remember him in our thoughts and our prayers. Now, friends, let's prepare ourselves to go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your blessing and love. The blessing of your presence. The blessing of everything that we have. We are humbled before you. You, O oh Lord, have given us your greatest gift. The very gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. He came as Messiah Counselor, King, Emmanuel. And today we gather together in this place to glorify His wonderful name and to give thanks in this first Sunday, a season of Advent. We wait, O oh God. But we wait not idly. But we rejoice in You and we share a message. We proclaim it to the highest of heavens that you are born. We thank you, God, that you know our lives and you know us intimately. And as we pray today, we pray a prayer for those needs that are in our minds and hearts. We pray for sisters and brothers and neighbors and family members that, that have great need. There's so many among us that are struggling with issues of health. We pray, Lord, that you will mend the broken bones and bring healing to those with disease. We pray, Holy God, that through this, through this season, you will be with us, even in our grief. We pray for the decisions that we make and we pray that we will always be among your will. And holy God, we thank you that you respond to us by providing us with a vision. And you're asking us to catch that vision of where you need us to be as your church and as individuals. And so bless us this day. Bless us as we fellowship together, as we worship, as we sing and pray, as we hear your word. May it all be absorbed into us that we can go from this place and be your faithful disciples with the good news of great joy to share to the whole world. Lord, thank you again for the freedom and the liberty that we enjoy and for those that protect that and protect us this day, we give you thanks. Bless us now, God, as we unite our voices and we unite our hearts and we share the prayer that you taught your own disciples to say our father who art in heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom Friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward now, and so let's prepare ourselves as we offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Holy God, we do thank you for all the blessings that you have provided for us. It's an honor to, do, to, to be here in this worship time. It's an honor to be able to give. And we pray that we would be generous, just as you have given your all for us. Bless now the gift and the giver. In Christ we pray. Your lesson for today comes from the Old Testament. 
in the book of Isaiah from the prophet in the second chapter in the first verse and if you have a Bible I invite you to get it out and follow along with me we'll be looking at chapter 2 of Isaiah beginning at the first the first four verses Hear are the words of the prophet in days to come the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills and all the nations shall stream to it many people shall come and say come let's go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem he shall judge between the nations and they shall arbitrate for many peoples they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. It's beautiful. Did you hear the words of the prophet this morning? You know, normally we gather on this first Sunday of the month and we're ready to have communion and do our thing. And yet, today is different somehow. Today is a first day of a new beginning for all of us. I encourage you to consider that because unlike... Uh, you would think we would begin the Christmas season with fa la 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 and fluff and glitter. The truth is, Christ, as I told the children, Christ came to a world that was deeply broken. And I want you to think about that because it came a time where God sent Christ to our world to be our Savior. We were in need, and we remain in need. We read a little later in the scriptures in Ecclesiastes there where the preacher says, for everything there is a season, a time to sow and a time to reap, a time to laugh and a time to weep, a time for war and a time for peace. 
peace. Hmm. On this Sunday, first Sunday of Advent, friends, we, we begin our journey of waiting and we read that Old Testament prophecy and the one who would bring, about the one who would bring peace. But a time for peace? When has that ever been, friends? Has the world ever known such a time? You know, in reflection, it would seem that all of history can actually be described as one war after another. War against clans and tribes and nations and empires and races and classes and east and west and north and south, uh, rich and poor, Christian and non. Has there ever been a moment in history, friends, when there hasn't been one group of people trying to dominate another group of people somewhere on the face of this earth? <laughs> Years ago, we had a thing called the Cold War. Do any of you remember that? Anybody? I know I'm old, but uh, <laughs> a few of you, thank you. Anyway... You remember those days, many of you do. It seemed like there was a nuclear warhead on every corner of the world, didn't it? Hmm. As a young seminarian, I went to seminary and I listened to my professors who I thought were the most brilliant people in the world. And in their theology, they became concerned. They became concerned because now humankind was not the only one who had the power to destroy our blessed earth. They, we had it, and God had it too. And they cried out, and I joined them. We cried out back then like voices in the wilderness that it was a time for peace because given the choice of peace or extinction, we chose peace. <laughs> Imagine that. Well, that was a long time ago. And yet, have you been watching the news? Here we are again. Negotiating tables with leaders, wrestling with one another about the very same thing. Let me ask you, is it safe to say that we all want peace? Is it? Can you nod your head yes or no? You know, Okay, looks like most of you are in agreement. And I think we all do agree that we want peace, but you see where we don't agree is how we'll achieve that peace. And so this morning, I want to present to you two simple ideas that are found in that second chapter of Isaiah that I'd like us to reflect. It says, in the latter days, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Now I want you to notice there that the prophet doesn't say anything about the military hardware ought to be thrown away. That'd be a waste of valuable resources. No. What he's saying there, the dominant theme there, is the word conversion. And it's not like, not unlike what Jesus Christ seeks among you and me as we convert our lives from evil to good. And that's how this peaceable kingdom will come, my friends. Maybe we need to think and we need to speak of peace as a strengthening through conversion rather than a weakening through disarmament. And then the second thought that I wanted to lift to you today is that, is that uh, well, Isaiah says, nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. And that key phrase, my friends, is learn war. There are a lot of people who believe, friends, that aggression and violence are part of our human nature that we can't ch and we can't change that because it's crucial to the evolution and to the survival of our species you know if you watch television watch the news every day you might honestly come to believe that as you watch the violence in our world every day and yet I want to suggest to you friends that since 1945 in a desert somewhere in New Mexico. The Manhattan Project exploded the first atomic bomb and they named it, do you remember? Trinity, of all things. 
I want to tell you that the future of our evolution and survival, I believe, depend on the elimination of our social violence. God calls us to be encouragers of one another, friends. Isaiah seems to be saying that killing and war are not natural instincts, but something that we have to learn. We have to study. We have to practice. And we have to perfect. Now, if that's true, then maybe one of the most important goals that we should have should be not to pass that knowledge on to our children if we truly seek peace. Hmm. I didn't read this scripture to you, but if you go on into the ninth chapter of Isaiah, you'll find there that he is inspired. He's inspired to teach, teach us about uh, uh, leadership, uh, about leadership roles in this struggle for peace and justice. In verse 5 of chapter 9, he says, For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood with the, will be burned uh, as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, and his name will be called Prince of Peace. Now friends, that announcement is the one of the Messiah. It's the foretelling of Christ. And it's later expanded in Isaiah to talk about him as a suffering servant. Those who will lead us from darkness into light, those who will lead us from a time of war into a time of peace will not be, my friends, the powerful rulers of our, of our world. But like Christ, they will be women and men, not unlike yourselves, like Christ, who will be humble and powerless. They will be possessed by such a vision, such a faith that they will be able to endure the abuse and the ridicule and the suffering. They'll endure prison, even death, so that they, by their stripes, or so that we, by their stripes, may be healed of our warring madness. And our principal leader in this will be Jesus the Christ. You know, in the beginning of the Sermon of the Mount, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Interesting word, peacemaker. What does it mean to be a peacemaker? A peacemaker is one who has a very lively vision of the peaceable kingdom. It's where, you remember? It's where the lion will lie down with the lamb. Jesus, Jesus and his disciples felt that way about the kingdom of God. They felt like it was imminent. It, it was right here at hand. It was close by, even in our midst and within us, if we would, but re if we would recognize it. And yet the peacemaker, friends, can also accept the fact that he or she probably will not live to see that dream fulfilled. Is that you, my friends? On this first Sunday of Advent, I ask you, is that you? Are you a peacemaker? A peacemaker is somebody who is committed to the principle of nonviolence. It was Gandhi who once stated that a means are ends in the making. How we get there, my friends, determines what we find when we arrive. You look at the history of our church, the heavily documented pacifism of the early church makes it very clear. That nonviolence was a central teaching of the gospel of Christ for his people, for you and for me. And so I ask you, is that you? Are you a peacemaker? A peacemaker has no enemies. And yet they have many enemies. It's ironic that nonviolence should evoke such passionate mistrust and hatred by others. But is that you? Are you a peacemaker? The peacemaker is one who's not afraid to take risks. They sacrifice comfort and careers and fortunes and loved ones and even their own lives. Is that you? Are you a peacemaker? You know, it's interesting, I think, how many of the characteristics of a peacemaker are found in the Beatitudes. Remember those? 
Who are the blessed, Jesus asks, and he says, they are the poor in spirit. They are the meek. They are the merciful. They are those who mourn. They are those who thirst for justice and are persecuted. My friends, as a people of faith, we have an absolutely crucial role to play in the preservation of this place. This little planet that God created that we call home, that God created for you and me, for us, His children. And I want to suggest to you that the day is coming. Maybe maybe it's already here. When nonviolence and disarmament are going to be the basic tenet of our faith in the same category as our freedom to worship and separation of church and state. Let me say it this way. No, let Paul, the Apostle Paul, say it. We are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. And struck down, but not destroyed. How in the world can that be, my friends? It can be because God is calling you. Is that you? Are you a peacemaker? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Let us pray. Oh God, it's with great urgency that we begin this season of Advent when we humbly await your, your coming upon this place. We pray, Holy God, that the blessing that can only come through Christ, a peace that only you provide, would come upon us and give us the ability to share this great news, the good news of great joy for us and for the whole world. Move us, O oh Lord. Let us not be stagnant, but let us be active in ways that we've never dreamed. Because we have that calling to tell this great news. Bless us now, Lord. In the name of God we pray. Amen. Friends, I want to invite you as we continue our reflection to stand and sing with me. Number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let's stand. Let's sing. Let's sing.